Okay, so here we are at the second objective in section 4.5 of Sullivan's pre-calculus. The second, did I say objection? Objective is using Descartes' rule of signs to determine the number of positive and the number of negative real zeros of a polynomial function or we might say uh, the number of possible zeros of both of those kinds, positive and negative. Again, we're uh, building toward these two objectives, number of reals, or all find the real zeros and solve polynomial equations, which seem like two totally different problems, but they're really the same problem. Okay, so here's a problem that comes up on my math lab and elsewhere. You want to be able to find uh, the number of, or what the possible number of each kind, positive and negative, real zeros there are. Here is Descartes' rule of signs. Let f denote a polynomial function written in standard form. Okay, so you have a polynomial function. <clears throat> so here's a statement about the number of positive real zeros, and then there's going to be a statement about the number of negative real zeros. The number of positive real zeros of f either equals the number of variations in the sign of the non-zero coefficients of f of x, or else equals that number less an even integer. Okay, so that's a mouthful there, but it'll be a lot easier problem than it seems just by reading uh, this rule. This word less here means uh, minus. And then basically it's the same thing except you um, do it for f of negative x. And so we that's a little problem in itself. We know how to find f of negative x because we know how to replace x with negative x and make the adjustment. Okay, so um, it says discuss the real zeros. Basically, we're trying to get the number of real zeros. So again, um, here's f of x, and we'll first look at this part of it, the number of positive real zeros. And um, it says the number of variations in the sign, okay? And so what we have here is a positive sign, a negative sign, a positive, another positive, a negative, and another negative. Okay. And so what we're going to do is um, we're going to um, go left to right and then s just uh, count the number of sign changes. Okay, so positive to negative, that's a change, so that's one. Negative to positive, that's another change, that's two. Positive to positive, that's not a change. Positive to negative, that's another change, that's three. Negative to negative is not a change. So three variations. And so the number of positive real zeros is either that number, three, or that number minus an even integer. Uh, so, actually,
actually it should say uh, even natural number because if you subtracted a negative even integer, then you could go up from there. But we only go down from there. So we could go down 2. That's an even integer. And that's all we've got. Okay, so um, if we went any more, then we'd be in the negatives. So either 3 or 1. There will be either 3 or 1 positive zeros, real zeros, for this function. Now we haven't said anything about the negatives yet, but three or one positive real zeros. And um, so if you looked at a graph, you would see two x-intercepts. Uh, you would see either three or one x-intercept on the right. Okay, so let's look at the negatives. Now, what, remember what we do is, for the, for the negative real zeros, we run the same thing with negative x. So let's find f of negative x. f of negative x, first of all, we have to figure out what f of negative x is. Well, it's 3 times the 7th power of negative x minus 4 times the 4th power of negative x plus 3 times the cube of negative x plus 2 times the square of negative x minus negative x minus 3, which is, well, if you have a seventh power of a negative, so 3 times negative x 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 times negative x, you'd have an odd number of negative factors, uh, and remember that that would make the whole thing negative because you would have all the, you would have pairs of negative factors pairing off and being uh, creating a positive, except there'd be one negative factor left over. So that'd make the whole thing negative. Negative 3x to the seventh. Then minus 4, but for an even number of negative factors, right? 4 is even. Then all the negatives pair up, everything ends up positive, so that's the same thing as x to the fourth. And then it'll be minus 3x cubed um, plus 2x squared plus x minus 3. And now we'll count the number of sign changes. Negative to negative, that's not a change. Negative to negative, that's not a change. Negative to positive, that's a change. Positive to positive, that's not a change. And positive to negative, that's a change. So there were only two changes in there because I went negative, 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 positive, positive, negative, only two changes. So the number of negative, negative real zeros is either two or less than two by a positive even integer could be zero. So on the left, if you looked at a graph, there would be two x-intercepts or no x-intercept. <clears throat> and so um, that would be how this, uh, how we would conclude this. Um, 
3 or 1 positive x-intercept, 2 or no negative x-intercept. That's the answer right there. Um, F has either 3 positive x-intercepts or one positive x-intercept and two negative x-intercepts or no negative x-intercept. And that's the answer to the Descartes rule of science problem applied to this function.